Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll do problem number 135 and 136. Problem number 135, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it. It says find two consecutive numbers such that we have to find two consecutive numbers such that half of the greater exceeds the fifth of the smaller by 8. So let's call these numbers, let's call the first number x and since they are consecutive, the next one, the larger one is going to be x plus 1. And then they go on that they, then they go on to tell us that the half of the greater exceeds this half of the greater one is more. How much more? It's 8 more than the fifth of the smaller one. So we need the greater one here. Half of this larger one. Here's the larger quantity x plus 1. That's the larger one. If you were to take a half of that, that quantity exceeds, in other words, it's more than fifth of the smaller. The smaller one is simply x over, is simply x. And we take a fifth of that. Again, half of the larger one, half of the greater one, exceeds the fifth of the smaller one by 8. In other words, the difference between the two quantity is 8. And that's all there is. We just have to simplify it. I'm going to move this equal, equal sign a little bit to the side here, for, and you will see in a second why. And that's all it is. We need a common denominator here. If we have a common denominator, it will make our life easier. We see a 5 here, we see a 2 here. Common denominator is going to be 10. This quantity has a denominator of 2. How can we convert that to a 10? It's very simple. Take the first quantity and multiply it by 5 over 5. Now this quantity has a denominator of 10, 5 times 2. This quantity has a denominator of 5, we need a 10. How do we convert this into a 10? Very simple. Take this quantity and multiply it by 2 over 2. Now both of these quantities, both of these quantities have a denominator of 10. We need a denominator of 10 here as well. Let's multiply 8 by 10 over 10. Now since the entire equation at this point has the same denominator, has the common denominator, we can simply ignore it. We are at, uh, we are at liberty to simply pay no attention to it because it ceases to play any role in it because everybody has it. Nobody, nobody has the right to brag, to say, look, I have a denominator of 10. Everybody else is going to say, big, big deal, so do I. No. So it plays no role, you understand? Let's, 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 let's work on it now, so we're not going to pay any attention to the, to the denominator. We have 5 times this quantity, 5 times this quantity right here, x, x plus 1, x plus 1. Then we have minus 2 times x, 2 times x. And that has to equal, that has to equal 8 times 10, which is 80. Let's just leave it at 8 times 10. Open the parenthesis, 5 times x is 5x, 5 times 1 is just 5, and then we have minus 2x, 5x, and then negative 2x is going to give us 3x plus 5 equals 80. Subtract the 5 from both sides, 5 is going to go away, and that's going to give us 3x is equal to 75, 80 minus 5, and that in turn implies that x must be 25 obviously because 3 times 25 is 75. At the very end we're going to take one, uh, we're going to take a couple of quick seconds to verify our work and I'm going to verify the work over here. I'm going to raise this part here, let's put it 80, squeeze in the 80 here and we're going to use this space to quickly verify our answer. It only takes a few seconds. So let's do it then. We are told half of the greater one. So if the x is, if x is the first number then the one that comes after is the greater one is going to be 26. So 26, which is the half of the greater one, we have to take half of the greater one minus the fifth of the smaller one. This is the smaller one, x is the smaller one, 25. If you were to take a fifth of it, if our, if our work is correct, if our work is correct, and if this answer is indeed correct, then the difference between these two quantities better be 8. Let's see what it is. 26 minus 2 is 13. 25 divided by 5 is... 5, 13 minus 5 is indeed 8. Our answer is indeed correct. You want to do one more? Let's do one more. 136.
136 that we are about to do is very similar to what we just did here except we'll have three consecutive numbers find three consecutive numbers such that such that when they are divided by such that when they are divided by 2, 3, and 4 respectively the sum of the in the room the sum of the quotients is 16 such that the sum of the three quotient is 16 before we do any work at all we have to make sure that we understand this term here quotient what does quotient mean quotient is just a very fancy way of saying the final result when one quantity is divided by the other when one quantity is divided by the for example for example if you have 17 and if you were to divide 17 by 5 3 5 3 5 is 15 and we have a 2, this of course is the remainder. But the result of the division, the whole number here, right here, this is called the quotient. Except here, we are running into situations where they have the quotient and no remainder. It's just quotient, that's it. So we have three consecutive numbers. So three consecutive numbers, let's call them x. If x is the first one, if you're going to call x the first one, then the one after that would have to be x plus 1, and one after that is going to be x plus 2. Okay, watch what happens, x plus 2. These are, these are our three consecutive number, if the first one is x. And then it goes on to say that when we divide, when we divide these three quantities by 2, 3, and 4 respectively, in other words, in that order, divide this by 2, divide this by 3, and divide this by 4, we are told that the final result of this division, which is called the quotient, plus the final result of this division, second quotient here, Plus the third quotient, when we divide the largest number by 4, the sum of there, the sum of the quotient is 16. There you go. That's our equation. That's all there is. We simply have to simplify. We simply have to work on it, obviously. Simply have to simplify it is, is a strange sentence. What can we do? We have 2, 3, and 4. What's going to be the least common multiplier? 3, 2, 3, and 4. We divide that by 2, we get 1, we get 3, and we get 2, and that's it. As you can see, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 3 is 12. So common denominator is going to be 12. We have to make, we have to make, we have to make uh, all these terms such that they end up with a denominator of 12. If every single term in the equation has a denominator of 12, we can simply ignore the denominator at that point. So let's do that, shall we? Let's make all of these denominators into 12. What I'm going to do is here, since I need a little bit of room, I'm going to rewrite like this. So the first one, we take a half of that. I need this room here in a second, you will see why. So the question is, this first term here has a denominator of 2. We don't want 2, we want 12. So we need 3 times 2, which is 6. We need to multiply. If we multiply top and bottom by this of this quantity by 6, we'll end up with a bottom of 12. We'll end up with a denominator of 12. You see, 6 times 2 is 12. So that part is done. This one has a denominator of 3, we want 12. I'm going to pick up some speed here. Multiply top and bottom of this quantity by 4. Multiply top and bottom of this quantity by 4. This one has a denominator of 4, we need 12. Let's multiply top and bottom of this quantity by 3. And finally, we need a denominator of 12 here. So let's multiply this quantity by 12 over 12. So now everybody, everybody has a denominator of 12, everybody has a denominator of 12, and we need not worry about the denominator anymore, because everybody has the same denominator. Everybody has the same denominator. And all, you, all we have to do at this point is simplify this equation. 6 times x is 6x, plus 4 times x plus 1. I'm going to write it here first like this, so that's easier for you to see. Plus... 3 times 3 
3 times x plus 2. And this entire thing has to equal, this entire thing has to equal 16 times 12. Okay? Now you have to pay attention as to signs here, of course, they are, we, are all add, we are adding all the quantities, but if one of them happens to be negative or, or if there are any negative, you have to pay, pay attention and slow down here because that negative has to be distributed throughout the entire expression in the parentheses. Lucky for us, they are all positive. So let's, let's pick up speed here. I'm taking too long. 6x, 4 times x is 4x, 4 times 1 is 4, plus 3 times x is 3x, 3, 3 times 2 is 6. Let's combine all the like terms. So we have 6x plus 4x plus 10x plus 3x plus 13x and here we have 4 plus 6 is 10. I was, I was avoiding multiplying this thing because I thought we'll have something here where we can simply divide both sides and not have to work it out but now we have no choice because we have to subtract 10. So how much is 12 times, 6, 12 times 16? I don't know. Let's, let's do it out. Let's do it out. We want 16 times 12. 12 times 6. 12 fives are 60. That I do know. 12 fives are 60. So 12 times 6 is going to be 72. So we have a 2. Carry 7. And then 12 times 1 is 12. Plus 7 is going to be 192. 192. Or if you didn't like that, if you don't want to multiply, if you don't want to multiply 16 by 12, we could have multiplied 12 by 16. It's the same exact thing. It's not going to change anything. So if you multiply 12 by 16, 16 times 2, 16 times 2 is 32. 2, carry 3, and 16 times 1 is 16, plus 3 is 19. As you can see, of course we're going to get the same answer. 12 times 16 is not going to be any different than 16 times 12, so that'll be silly. Of course we're going to get the same answer. So it's 192, let's subtract 10 from both sides, 192. Let's subtract 10 from both sides, so we end up with 13x equals 182. 13x equals 182, and we're going to finish it up on the top. So we have to divide 182 by 13. So x would have to equal 182 over 13 from here. How many 13? How many 13 does one have? One has no 13. One has no 13. That one goes and joins the 8 and becomes 18. How many 13 does 18 have? 18 has 113. 18 has 113. Once you take away 18 from the once you take away 13 from the 18, we will have a remainder of 5. And that 5 is going to go and join the 2. That 5 is going to go and join the 2 and become 52. And how many 13 does 52 have? Well that's very easy because 52 is simply 26 plus 26. And 26 is made up of 213. Are you with me so far in the logic? 2, 13, 13 plus 13 is 26. So if you double the 13, you get 26. And if you double the 26, you get 52. Which means 52 must have 4, 13. There you go. The answer is 14. All we have to do now is to verify our work. Very quickly, we're going to verify here. We're going to take a few seconds, as always, to verify our work. The work is right here. If we were to take the half of the first one, which is 14, if you were to take a half of 14 plus a third of the next one, a third of the next one, which is going to be 15, if you take a third of that, and finally, if you take the fourth, fourth of the largest one, which is going to be the next one, it's going to be 16, and if you take a fourth of that, these three quantities, if our work is correct, if our answer is correct, then these three quantities better add up to what the problem tells us it should add up to, they should add up to, which is 16. Let's find out, shall we? 14 divided by 2 is 7, 15 divided by 3 is 5, and 16 divided by 4 is 4. 5 plus 7 plus 5 is 12, 12 plus 4 is 16. What, what do you know? It's correct. We left out. Bye now.